Gotcha, okay. Um, what so do you think like about to, these like injuries? To, if you'd like to, I, I hate to see anybody get injured. So you're going to prevent this from happening again? Do you think this kind of force is necessary on peaceful protests? Uh, not on peaceful protests, no. Are you saying we did was peaceful? Yeah, I think there was unlawful behavior. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, mean, I cannot. Well, it was, you know, I want to be very clear. We're doing a very thorough analysis of all of the events of the last couple of days. What for? In order to make sure that everybody's rights were protected. In order to make sure that our police officers are working within policy. To make sure that we have a full understanding of how this came down. And to make sure that going forward, if we need to be better, that we can be better. Okay. So, can I, I just say I don't that, want to rush. Can to I just say that my rights were obviously not protected, very obviously not protected. Well, I think, I think, uh, and I would like to know who was responsible for allowing police officers to be there, and who gave the order for them to use those firearms on protesters. So the police officers uh, for the UC police force on our campus and all <laughs> nine campuses. Um, I saw RPD Chancellor White giving that to call me a mutual aid request to actually have RPD show up on campus. They can't just can I, like, can wow. I, I mean, I, I am not going to be able to answer his question if I keep getting asked other questions before I finish. I'm happy to answer every question. I'm working on it and you interrupted me, John. I'm sorry, but okay. I felt like you weren't actually addressing the entire issue. You were only talking about UCPD, not RPD, who are also on campus. So why is the RPD on campus? So do you want me to answer the question? Let's do stack. These are both questions, stack. okay? Stack. Stack. So what, what do I do? Do I do a mic check? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do stack. It's the finger so, so there were three agencies of police on campus yesterday. I'm going to address them sequentially, John. Thank you. The first is the UC Police Department on our campus and the other nine campuses are all trained police officers. They have full training. They are fully deputized in our jurisdiction. <coughs> They've been trained to carry firearms. And so, if you want to talk about why our police carry firearms, I'd be happy to talk about that. Is that okay. Train and make it right. Stack. 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 Okay. Sorry. Continue. Then we have um, we we ha and we had the ability to put um, across the all of the police from the UCs, and we had uh, seven campuses officers here. We did not have officers from Davis or Santa Cruz or Merced but every other campus sent officers. Wow. Um, and that totaled, I believe, about 105 officers. Okay? And then based on... Of UCPD. Of UCPD, okay? And they all had senior commanding officers here. And so not necessarily the police chiefs, the people that were at that level. And then they met and they had a, a center where they all communicated with each other. Then as the size of the crowd developed and some of the behaviors that were there, the decision, and it's a law enforcement decision, it's not my decision personally, I was consulted and agreed that we needed to have some additional officers. So that's when the Riverside City Police, some 40 officers, and don't hold me precisely to the numbers, but it's about another 40 officers came and came into the student union or the hub and then talk to our officers and to find out what was going on and how they could be helpful. And then it still wasn't enough officers, and so then we called in the county officers. Same thing, they came in. Uh, it took a little longer for them to get here, so that was some of the delays that were going on um, because there were some other events going on around some bank robberies and some bomb threats and things of that nature, which then distributed um, the police force so finally we had about 185 officers on campus, all fully authorized. Now, the instructions were to not engage uh, in physicality unless they were being assaulted or there was imminent danger to personal safety or property. And so I think you look at, at the facts, and I know the emotions are different, and I respect the emotions, I really do, and I understand them. But the facts are, uh, there were some skirmishes. There were skirmishes that used batons in some circumstances. There were skirmishes that resulted in the use of what's called less lethal force. And it's important to notice that, that you were hit on the legs. 
they're trained not to hit in the abdomen or the face or the neck or anything like that. But, well, let me, can I just, well, I'll come back to the, you know, they were trained that was a, I to do this. For a second. Yeah, okay. What's, what's that stat? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we have uh, okay. All right. people waiting to ask you questions. Yeah, that's fine, but I want to give a thorough answer to this important Absolutely. question. Absolutely. Continue. Please, please continue. Um, so, the event where you received these injuries, the decision was made by the officers at the moment that there was, or officers were being assaulted, and this was the response. There was no pepper spray used, um, and that was by purposeful design because of the issues that happened to Davis, right? And so um, th that was a decision to protect themselves and to regain order and prevent others from being hurt. And it's a law enforcement judgment that they were fully authorized to do. Um, you know, and uh, and I and I am really feel very poorly that anybody got hurt. I should also say that nine officers got hurt. Nine officers were injured yesterday, and there were, and there were oh, actually some worse than that. And and there were only two arrests booked, felony assault arrests, and they weren't our students on any of the campuses. I was there when the second country. Yeah. So, and there was a woman who was arrested and released who was one of our students. Um, and uh, the, upon analysis of why she got arrested, she was released because the violation didn't rise to the order of being arrested and cited. Okay? So the two that were arrested on felony assaults are um, a man from Corona and a man from Los Angeles. They're not students. They're not UC students on any campus to our knowledge. They were outside community members who wanted to come here. And uh, so what, I think if you... Why does that matter? Well, I think it matters in the sense that um, our students were peaceful. The students from all of the campuses were peaceful. They were angry, you bet. And there's a lot to be angry about. I'm not And they were... Um, they had a chance to be heard, and they were heard. Um, there were a lot of things. The reason I say that it, it's important to me that they were non-students in the sense that our students um, understood the, the level of protest and where to stop. And it was outside people who just who did, didn't, don't value our values on this. So are you saying that I don't value your values, or that I was not peaceful because I got shot? No, I don't know. I didn't. I haven't seen what you personally did. Okay, I'm talking about the two who were arrested. They did not value our values, and they assaulted police. Mm -hmm. So that's not that's not your call to make either, because you haven't seen their anything that they've done to either. No, and I'm not a police You're officer. Presuming exactly. Alleged. No, it's alleged assault, and I said that. If I didn't, then I misspoke. I mean, this, this whole thing, this whole process, then is is again. There are videotapes and is all being analyzed in a thoughtful, thorough way. And at the end of the day, the right thing will be done. So for those two guys. Hey, will you release those? Hold on, hold on. Let's go to the stack. I need it first on stack. Hold on, there's a stack. So let me ask you a question. Would you like to go on some stack? Uh, I'm going to wait for the stack to close. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. She has a question. So stack means just this is the list of questions. The list of questions. Okay. Um, in order so, they, so you were like quoted as uh, as blaming the sit-ins in the protests on a few aggressive protesters. Um, well, I, I want to know, one, what is your definition of aggressive? Um, because I know violence has a, has a very definition for many people. So I, I would like to know what your definition of aggressive is, right and also you're saying that the, the students <laughs> were peaceful, and I agree with that, but I also uh, did see many outside protesters being just as peaceful, mm -hmm. uh, me that. being one of them. And I agree with that too. And uh, I too was, I too was uh, assaulted by officers um, I mean, not to the same extent. I don't have any physical <coughs> injuries. I, I'm bruised, but um, so I would just, I would just like to know um, why, why the the people who are from the community, who this is a public institution, just have just as much say. Um, why they were not? Why you don't value their their opinion as much, and um, why you consider them not as peaceful? I I, I didn't. I think what I 
Yeah, That's and again, I don't have the precise words I've used, but let me say what my intent was. Mm -hmm. That there was a small group of people, mm -hmm. and I believe some were non-students mm -hmm. and others are students, mm -hmm. okay, who became aggressive and sort of pushed the envelope, okay, and ended up getting then a, a police response to try and hold physically a line so people couldn't get back in the building and disrupt for another meeting. So I don't know what the technical police definition of aggressive is, but in some respects, sort of colloquially, it's sort of looking for a fight, right? I mean, it's just pushing, pushing, being asked to back off a little bit and then pushing even harder. But I'm sure there's a technical law enforcement and the student there's, I'm not, got the right words here, but that's kind of a common sense definition. But it was a very small, and, and so I'm not, I'm being very careful not to generalize on campus members or community members, age, gender, or any of that stuff. But within the people that were here yesterday, there was a group who were, who were looking for a fight. Um, I, I need to ask you personally because I was on the front line there. And so can you tell me, yeah, tell me where you were and what uh, this, what the, the, back up a little bit to the moments that you want to talk about okay, so I kind of fine. get a context. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I was, I was there in the front with the police uh, right in front of me. Um, there was a female officer and, and you know, their, their line. Um, so you, were you on the loading dock side or this side? The, the event I'm talking about uh, was at the loading dock. Okay. Um, and standing there where, you know, they told us not to, not to move in further, we didn't. Mm -hmm. and, and still I was uh, hit twice with a baton in my legs and a baton in my chest. I was hit in my arm and knocked down. Um, so I need to know exactly how I was being aggressive and how, and exactly who is held accountable. I know we've asked you uh, already, but I need to know who is held accountable for, for that sort of um, violent tactic of sure. hitting people with batons when we're not armed, I have nothing on me. I did not have weapons, right. um, so that's kind of my question. Sure. So again, I haven't seen yeah. your deals, but but we will review everything that happened back. And so the the individual decisions made by officers in the heat of the moment are decisions that come by the officers down there, and they made the judgment. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the officers are accountable. Individual officers are accountable. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, what I, if I could answer trying both these pieces yeah, at once. That's fine. You know, there are a, a set of policies that guide the behavior of poli our police officers, mm -hmm. okay? If their behavior was within policies, then uh, they're responsible in the sense that they were the ones there. But they're not responsible in the sense that they made necessarily a, an error, okay? Now, if they acted outside of policy, then it becomes a different matter, right? And then we have, uh, you know, we analyze, and then it becomes a personnel discussion. Somebody made a mistake, was it egregious, uh, was it minor, you know, and so forth. So there's a lot of work to do to analyze this event. It's gonna take time for people to go through the videotapes, chronicle things, catch your narrative. You know, I hope you get a chance to speak to police and characterize your view. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, we'll get it on. Okay, and I'm sorry you, you, you got Thing up a little. So, you know, the, the, physic, the physicality piece of those confrontations is a regrettable direction. So, let me see. So, we have a stack. Next on stack is Ben. No, it's set right now. Um, so, in regards to the last person who was arrested, Umberto, um, he was arrested when there was only about six of us standing within 15 feet of the police. Uh, for the hour leading up to that, or the half hour leading up to that, he had been sitting on the ground with a group of five or six people to the far edge next to the swimming pool. Um, there was no one else blocking. The police could have walked up and down that walkway as they pleased. They sat there. I witnessed two lines of police form behind the riot line. Okay, when they do that, as I've seen throughout the, these protests, they break through and they, they create what we call what is a snatch squad. A snatch squad, where they target one or two people to bur burst through and arrest people. They usually do this when there's a lot of commotion going on. 
But at the time, they were sitting there still. I warned the group who was sitting down to get up because they were about to be kettled. Kettled is another thing that they do in, in these riot situations. They surround you. They don't necessarily arrest you right away, but they surround you. And then when you get freaked out enough to try to maybe twitch or move, they call it resisting. And they say that you're trying to flee them or whatever. So I saw that about to go down and I warned them and they got up and we were all, we all backed up. I turned my head for one second to the right. As soon as I did that, I heard people yell, look out. That line of cops burst through, tried to grab me, targeted. And when I ducked out of the way, messed up my foot really bad, um, got out, they grabbed Umberto. They also grabbed another girl who fell to her knees and started praying. Uh, Justin and I, we were standing there and uh, we saw the girl and we ran back and we grabbed her. And we got her so she couldn't be arrested. Umberto, he's the male, so they had about six guys on him. He had no chance. He had been sitting peacefully for the previous 45 minutes. The only time he stood up and made any movement was when, we were, when I was warning him that he was about to be arrested. He was in a group of six. What threat? Why was there even a, a riot there? Why would they arrest us when we were there? We were, there was about maybe 500 students on this side. We were next to the pool. There was about seven, there was, no, we counted. There were 17 of us and there was 18 police on the front line. There was another group of about 10 police who formed the snatch squad. Yeah. So there's 28 police and 18 students. And they felt the need to come through and particularly snatch up one of us. Guess what? You're not gonna hear about this because there were no cameras because there was only 18 of us. There might be, hopefully, there could have been some personal cameras on this on that scene. I hope so, but maybe there's, is there security cameras behind the loading dock? We're gonna, we're gonna ask for those from our lawyer because I would like you to respond to why they would have arrested one person in that situation. Well, I mean, again, I mean, I'm gonna keep saying this because I don't wanna be misquoted, but um, I don't know why he was arrested because I didn't see it. I haven't seen the tapes, but it could, Undoubtedly. I, mean, I don't need to, I don't need you to go on if you're not gonna if that's gonna be your, your final. I just want you to know that that happened and yeah. it goes against and your I previous that, you, it goes against your previous theory that right. there was justification in yeah. the arrests. I would just say one thing, having lived uh, a long time on different university campuses, that sometimes an arrest is made well after the crime was occurred. But they targeted me and went for someone else. Well, yeah. In the yeah. And, and I'm just, it's a, that's my response. Can we, yeah, can and, we leave it there? I, I don't need to hear any more response. But I, wanna, I do, I do, I said, you're all going to film this and put it up on the web. I want it. Unedited. I, well, somebody's going to. I mean, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> you look old and frail, but I'm not. <laughs> you don't look old and frail. Um, is that police officers sometimes make arrests minutes, hours, days after something unlawful that warrants an arrest. And so I, in the absence of any specific knowledge about what we're discussing here, Seth, I just say it's not unusual for an arrest action to occur, not in the moment, but in time afterwards. Can I respond and very briefly? Okay, DJ, I'll put you the, on um, the thing that scares me about that in the history of Occupy and the history of protesting yeah. is that they arrest you and then they come up with the charge. Look at, see this, <laughs> everybody knows. So that's why they could target anybody. And whoever ends up in that net, they'll, they'll come up with a charge for them. Or five. <laughs> or five. Injustice. They come up with $25,000 bails for a member of the staff who works in that building or wherever they now have the, the, uh, the media center. They charged him with, for assault with a deadly weapon. He had a video camera, he was filming. He's sitting in jail right now. Or no, they bailed him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or okay. Yeah, the the yes. yeah. My question has been answered, and I withdraw. Okay, <laughs> DJ. Yep. Is that an official movement? No. <laughs> uh, Jessica. Uh, my question: We were talking about the police, and you were talking about how um, there were not enough. Now, my question is: Students have the right to assemble, so if there's a large mass of students. That does that give you the inclination that you need more police, or you need enough police to suppress the students? Because in my opinion and in my experience with Occupy, the police, when they come in, especially outside, an outside agency like the Riverside Sheriff's Department, they escalated the situation completely. There was nothing near the antagonism that, that happened after they got there until they arrived. So either they're there to suppress or they're there to intimidate, which I guess is the same thing. You know? So are you afraid of the students? 
Am I afraid? Right. <laughs> I what, think what, so. <laughs> went into, what went into the, the decision to bring in so many police to contain a situation that was peaceful sure. until the Riverside Police Department got here? Right, in open fire. So, in yeah. open uh, So again, let me let me try and I actually want to answer your question as thoroughly as I can. Okay. Um, and again, I this being chancery, you have to know a lot about a lot of things, but I don't know the details about a lot of things. When the, when the assessment of a, of, of a circumstance like around the Regents meeting, I mean, I think when you think about it, when I think about it objectively, so let me just put it on me rather than on anybody else, is the history of Regents meetings have had a lot of protests ever since I came to California, came back to California in 2008, okay? I've seen them in San Francisco, I've seen them in LA, I've been in the middle of them. I was in them as, when I was your age as a student around Vietnam, okay? So I have over time, and I don't think you would... I'm listening, I promise. Are you? Sorry. Yeah. I'm just okay. trying to share. Can I share? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's reasonable for us to have expected this stuff, to, have, to need to have a well-controlled possibility of the market if we needed to use it. It's just being prepared. So we had, and I went through the numbers a little while ago, it would have been great if we never had to use any of those officers, except, you know, a couple at each door just to make sure the people who were in there had been authorized to be in the building. I don't think any of us want to be in the case where something really goes bad. And I can point to examples on, not around protests, but on the horrible things that have happened on some other campuses where somebody with a gun shows up. If we're not prepared, then how can I feel that I'm comfortable in keeping this place as safe as humanly possible for our students, our faculty, and staff, and our guests. So I'm going to err on the side of being prepared. And that's why we judge the tenor of the crowd, the sophistication of the crowd, the mood of the crowd, the size of the crowd, and realize that if something really bad started to happen, and it never really bad, never became really bad, we needed to be prepared. And so you, when you're out of your own officers, then we do have this and I forget the precise name of uh, mutual aid. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so the city officers who came in tend to be the officers who work around the campus, so they have a better sense of what a university campus is. And then we still didn't have enough, and then we needed county officers. Why do you think you didn't have enough? That's the part well, that's confusing. Yeah, I, I'm not the judgment on that. Who is? Law enforcement is, and it was a group. Uh, our chief, coupled with the other chiefs or assistant chiefs in the various campuses are there. And they're, they're looking at a variety of variables as well as their experiences. And so bringing in those officers, yes, and I mean, I absolutely agree with Wait, you. Wait, so that. ultimately you didn't have the executive decision on how many cops are on this campus. You're saying there was a team of law enforcement that made the decision? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not, I mean, I, I couldn't, I mean, I can't, I couldn't look at you and say we needed 50 or 10 or 100. So, so, no do you have the names and badge numbers of the team of officers? Because they didn't have badge numbers in the front line. I know. I'm, I'm s <laughs> sorry, so you mean the... The team of officers who made the decision to call in more officers, you have the names and the badge numbers of them, I'm assuming. Well, I'm assuming I do too, but I, don't, I can't tell you who they are right now. I mean, it's our chief of police and our staff. It's the other UCPD people that were here from Berkeley and San Francisco. It was a collective discussion. They were actually very thoughtful and sophisticated and talked about it and made decisions. I, I'm not I'm not making decisions on the law enforcement size that was thought to be ready to be ready for the, the potential of something really being tough. So you are not making decisions on the public safety of your students? That's not what I said. Do you do you have authority over I the said cops? I was not making decisions on precisely the size of the force that was necessary to be well prepared to manage the day. That's another, that's another word you keep using, prepared. Yeah. You say you're prepared for all this stuff to happen, but you don't have the names and the badge numbers of the police <laughs> who made the executive order to call them more police officers. Right. So 200 have oh, access to them. Right. 200, so I don't know that he could have... No, he said it was made with a, by a collective decision. So someone of, made a decision to bring in RPD. And, and well, let me be very clear. I'm not going to hide behind my chief of police. I fully <coughs> and endorsed the idea of having more officers here because I wanted to 
have as safe of a day as I possibly could. Have you noticed that that doesn't happen in France or Germany or Spain? <laughs> when they, I mean, because they have bigger, they have bigger <coughs> numbers than us and less police at their protests. It is a, a particular American model, and I, you know, for somebody who saw the overreaction that happened in Vietnam, it seems like you would, you would see this as an overreaction too. Yeah, actually, I, I just, I did not see it as an overreaction. So you think yeah. that the police? Yeah. I think if we, oh, I think if we brought in the California Highway Patrol, or brought in the National Guard, I mean, I think we're brought in the sheriffs. SWAT teams. They're pretty. On the they're pretty. No, no, no. SWAT teams. What, who were those guys on top of the new engineering building with those sniper teams? Like, teams? They had those hats like they're in Vietnam. Who are those guys? Oh, I, have, I have a question Actually, about... Actually, can we get back to stack so yeah, we don't have this thing on? I'm not going to have much tolerance if it's just being random. Yeah, let's, let's, let's point of process. Let's, sure. let's keep this order. Yeah, you know, SEMA was next. Is this, is this, I check. Is this the sign? Point of process. Yeah. That's okay. the one you want. <laughs> SEMA. I guess I had a question. Mm. I, can't, I can't hold my tongue, so that's fine. <laughs> Desiree, would, did you want to get stacked? No? Uh, David, you're up. Yeah, I was wondering, um, what's the justification for the bloated incomes of many of your administrators that are working in the UC system, which seems to be the excuse for raising tuition fees so high? Yeah. Um, bloated on, on the standard, I mean, there are, there are a lot of well-paid people. Teams. Overly well-paid. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that's... I don't know about a lot, either. So I wouldn't say that the janitors and, <laughs> uh, you know, the teachers, no, the admin, a lot of the people that are doing the work. I agree with you. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm very concerned about their level of compensation. And so we work hard. We gave everybody 3% uh, raises this year for the first time in a while. For many people, the first time in four years. And what about the management? I have I heard it went up 400000 no, my pay actually has not changed since I came in 2008. The regions did, though. The regions don't get paid. Ah. They don't get paid directly. Stop. Not directly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's they, nice. Yeah. So, um, but I think the, the discussion about this in, a, in a, an objective way is, particularly in the medical centers and so forth, that there's a market out there. And to have people that are running Reagan Hospital and things like that, you know, you see, wants to have really good people, and people get help, people stay healthy, and there's a price to that. Don't you think it's kind of ironic to have the man's name on a hospital that actually basically closed down a large part of the uh, men mental health uh, industry <laughs> in this state? <laughs> Ronald Reagan. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, we actually have another march scheduled for four. Um, Where are you going to go? The courthouse. It's about so, citizens you're not united. Call the cops on us, are you? No, I'm just going to no, join you. Yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's uh, the, the downtown. The, ba yeah. the bankruptcy court at 12th and Main. So yeah. um, he, he might join us. You guys got to make it going. It's going to be yeah. yeah. So it's that's what, uh, whoever wants. I mean, free association, right? But I'm yeah, going to go. So whoever wants to ride with me. Wait, just uh, two items. Oh, well, um, we hoping we have a yeah. uh, identified local clinic that is free of charge. I will provide you with the address for that. And then you had indicated you wanted to make a police report, but not go to the police station. Uh, we can have someone come over. Actually, here. I was going. You have to have an incident report before you file a police. Okay, report. well, I can have someone come over here to talk to you about that. I don't know all of the mechanics about that. If you'd like. Sure. Okay, I don't. We'll, we'll get them over here as quickly as possible. Um, if you just want to have a seat, I can take you inside, or if you want to wait outside. You know the regents are. Um, you you decide really about the my you care about the education everywhere. On-site medic. But the way that thing was drafted last year, it really had tons of money coming to the UC. It was a huge cost. So I think they're okay. they're analyzing. So do you want me to have someone come over right now? Uh, no. No. Then we'll okay. end up probably supporting this whole thing. It would okay. be very so, kind of smart about when they come out yeah. and endorsing okay. things. Well, yeah. just as a conceptual question, I'm just yeah. curious because no one ever considers it in this world. Yeah. What do you think about health care or education? Yeah. So when the cops I mean, come out, it's a lofty goal. Do you, think, do you think you can get there with this movie? 
I think this movement has been very helpful yeah. because it's raised, it's raised, it's, it's, it's cutting across all sectors. It's just not really the same thing. It's blocking the yeah. So I'm actually very encouraging. And I, I hope I can get some of you to still join with me when I go to Sacramento. Because those guys need to hear voices. They, they all do. Most you know, people don't participate in kind of the situation the where they all must go. Um, from the city council in LA. Have you done it yet? Have oh, you, oh, you have cars, good. <laughs> um, so, so my statement is that, um, I mean, a lot of us, most of us, pretty much all of us, believe that yesterday's, you know, as you heard, that we thought it was unnecessary for that amount of force to be used, and so the, the funding that is going towards that, we don't agree with that, and that is our money. And so that is, that, that's a grievance that we have, and I know it's a grievance that we're going to be addressing. Okay, and I'm glad you are, and, and, and I acknowledge and understand it. I really do. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Be safe. Be careful. The background for it, so you can understand why I'm asking this. Um, yesterday, as you know, we went in and we were going to attempt to bring our grievances to the region. As we went to bring our grievances to the region, they decided to only allow us 20 minutes, which got extended another 20, and everyone only had one minute to speak. And in that minute, nobody even really accomplished more than introducing themselves and barely starting their speech. If they're going to have a public comment, and they should have a public comment, I'm not saying they shouldn't, shouldn't they have it extended? Shouldn't it be something that they, does get through all of the grievances of the people because they are there to represent the people? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think uh, they do limit. Sometimes it's 20 minutes. They, they look at how many people signed up. Okay, and, it, and again, I heard yesterday that there was something like 40 or 45. 65. 65, okay. Well, day before there was, you know, the number on Wednesday. Um, I'm not sure the exact number. I believe it was in the 40s when it began today. So on Wednesday, they had scheduled an hour. Okay, and they started going through the names. They called Tim, Sue, and Manuel. Nobody was there. And I forget the total number of people who talked on Wednesday, but my, my rough recollection was maybe 10 or 15. And so they got through in well less than an hour. And people had a little more time. Okay. Now the reason there's an overall time limit is there's also a bunch of business. And the, and the regents, you like it or not, are state authorized body to conduct the business in the have to get through this stuff. So there's an enormous legal and financial repercussions. So they have to get to the business. On the second day, they had scheduled 30 minutes. Because normally, just historically, the first day has a lot more activity than the second day. Here it was practice. It was different. And so uh, Sherry Lansing, as, as the chair of the region, has the authority and the responsibility to decide on the spot how long to go. And so you know, she did it in a couple of 20 or 30 minutes. That's just, and then people who were speaking and didn't get a chance to get all their words out were encouraged to put a piece of paper, which then gets sent around to all the regions to read. And if you didn't have a piece of paper, you can still send it to the secretary's office and say this is part of the public comment from the January 19th meeting at Riverside, and then it will get written by the regions. I feel it would be hard. How do you feel? Shouldn't it be more geared to getting the people's voice heard and getting a response back from them? Possibly a separate meeting held before, where there's its main focus is just public comment. You get, it's not a time restricted thing. People can go up. Yeah. And there's no business afterward. That way, they can yeah. have all yeah. of the people's opinions fresh in mind going into the next meeting. They still have that open business. Yeah, that's an, you know, that's a, an, an idea that's worthy of consideration. I do know yesterday that three of the regions visited with 18 students for an hour after the meeting was over and had a really terrific conversation and the students had some ideas that they hadn't thought about. I do know that individual, anytime you get more than four regions together at once, it becomes an official meeting. So you can't, you know, then it has to be noticed and you have to have security and all of a sudden from just a casual conversation on the campus, you, you, have, you have, you know, a $20,000 event. Right? 
but individual regents are going to the campuses to have those open conversations with students and faculty and staff. There are two regents here today, they're still here, they're walking around talking to everybody today. Uh, so, I mean, they actually, they really do want to hear the, the stories and listen to them. Not only the grievance, what's some ideas on solutions? And I've always thought all the time that if I could say, I hate this, but here's an idea. Like you just gave me an idea. No, I should pass it on. Extremely it's getting more sessions in advance. What makes them experts on what's It's a great idea. And they are, um, now that we got to see that, you understand some of why we started to try and get the come out because we were trying to demand the regions. We wanted to talk to the regions. I got that was the whole point of the meeting. So I, it was still a peaceful protest. Everything was peaceful. Inside. Then the inside. It was always peaceful inside. Yeah, it was peaceful inside. Then when it got outside the stairs, it was still peaceful. And then it hadn't gotten violent at all. There was no violence at this point. But the police ordered everyone to disperse. They got a little bit hostile, but they never actually did anything. They were just standing out there still demanding to talk to the region. Okay. From there, the police um, started to um, bring more and more people in. That's understandable. I can understand getting reinforcements. We, you know, we were playing that little cat and mouse game all day. But we fast forward to back when we were at the loading docks area, and we're just sitting back there. No one's trying to push lines. No one's trying to do anything. The police just decide at that moment to use. Way excessive force. They were sitting there poking people in the ribs with their clubs. People were getting shot with those plastic bullets. And there was no escalate, or they were the sole escalation into that point point of it. So at that point, you're firing on innocent protesters. It was a peaceful protest. Of course, the protesters are going to get angry because now their rights are being taken from them. So you label it a violent protest at that point when they start to get hostile because the police escalated it. Don't you feel that this is a problem? Were you back there when uh, there were three uh, vehicles surrounded? Were you back there? Yeah. So um, those three people in there uh, were uh, provost for the system. He's a neurosurgeon. He was the, the vice president for health. He runs hospitals and the person who does investments. So they're in these little pickup trucks, right? And they're surrounded. And they were, I don't know, 50, 60 minutes or whatever. I'm scared. So, so, so there was, had to be a response. And I didn't, I have not seen the tapes. It was described to me as a lot of protesters. And then the police got in and sort of police vehicles. And then people sat down. And those were the standoff. And I talked to the occupants of the base and was on my cell phone. And asked them how they felt. So we had a long conversation. We just that to play out. Where do we go and get those? People who are in a legal way, I'm not a legal way or a trap. And I said, let's just We always talk about tuition going up. And I want to calm down. People want to realize that we're regions. It's a real focus of the conversation. It's just sort of like that. So there's a lot of the use of capital. I mean, there isn't all those waiting things out and trying to determine on the police side. What do you have to respond to? What can you just go this minute? Things he yells at you. Um, no, I was up at the front. I got, uh, luckily, it was just the two people around me. But unfortunately, they were both um, women. One
one of them was in high school even, getting attacked by police with the time. And then, of course, he's like the artifact who got shot by the police at the time. And then, like, other protesters from some other side who shot. So just the point, I mean, like, I'm not it even arguing. <laughs> well, it's not you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just yeah. Yeah. I think you know what will happen is that will be a great day to have presences on campus and presence in Sacramento. Yeah, I think so too. And I think it, you know, it's quite a ways away so we get organized and communicate our students and get involved. You can you teach out to teach the campuses and right. the faculty can go and teach yeah. in public spaces? Right, and, and so then you know, people are, who don't want to participate don't lose the opportunity to have a lecture or a discussion, but they can also be delivered yeah. message. And we have many faculty who know how to do that well. Okay. Not everybody. Well, you can encourage it or promote it or something because, like you said, that outside pressure in the form of the general strike this country has been seen since, what, 46 up in Oakland, I think. But that would be awesome if you could help the Occupy movement. Now, you think of those 100 million men or 100,000 men things and throwing up the ball in the 